Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna make a Scarlet Heroes character. And this is for a potential new campaign because I just concluded Shadows of Darkane. This one will be a lone wolf adventure because Scarlet Heroes is centered around having a strong epic hero and the fact it has a solo engine built into it is also a consideration that fits very well into the prospects of my channel so creating a character is uh fairly straightforward in this game now the rules are a tad different it does kind of pay homage to osr which I am not too familiar with, but it seems to have a modern twist on at least the concept of descending AC. So I've been reading this book for a little bit now. I, I got this some time ago, but I, I'm finally diving right into it. And as I create this character, I'm sure I will miss a few things. I am a amateur to RPGs, and this channel, as I always state, is my learning experiences. Now, with that in mind, um, I will have this player character in stock and I'm ready to go in a future video. I want to make a new campaign about that lone wolf concept using this character. Because it is solo, I believe this game does give your solo character an edge already. So I won't really, I probably won't have to modify the setting, the, the stats, and give that extra kick that I sometimes do with maze rats or other systems I've played before. So, before we begin, let me mention that I'm not fully experienced yet with Scarlet Heroes. I know the basics. I'm watching tutorial videos online. There's not too many, but there are some, mostly actual plays, but just enough to make me, you know, dive in, read the book first, watch a video, see it in action, because I personally do better if I see an RPG in action after kind of skimming through the book, understanding its premise and understanding its standards. So to create a character, it's right off the bat. Let's first go to page four. You guys can't see the whole page book yet. So let me just kind of move my stuff over here. And I got a few new pieces of flair. So hopefully that helps with the, with the quality of my videos. You can't really see the whole book, but I'm not, I'll try to read off what, what's happening here. The first page is not too, too much of it of not too important that's the basics of the path of legend words to remember i got my little pc book here so the um my printer is down so i have to use uh the i have to use this little book but i've decided to actually if i continue this this will hold all my player characters from other games so this will be my little go-to the back side will be for inventory if i have no room okay so roll your attributes we have to first roll uh, I think 46, take away the drop, drop the lowest roll as usual with, with a method of D&D. &D. And then we have to write down the score and the modifier. So I have my 3D6. Let's see, I got one more D6 here somewhere. I'll just have to use my little red one I use typically for the enemies, which is totally fine. So we will roll. First, let's note the character, and then we'll get the name. First, let's do the name first. I have the GM apprentice cards here. Uh, Oscar seems fine to me. So this is Oscar. And then we have strength. Let's see, we have dexterity. These are all the typical, oops, we have intelligence first it looks like actually. I'm gonna keep these things in order based on the game. So int, we have dex, we have wisdom, there we go, wisdom, we have, uh, looks like constitution, so these are a little out of order when I'm used to, which is totally fine, charisma, okay, so the value, and then the modifier for Oscar, underline his name, 
All right, so it looks like we'll do strength first. You can kind of distribute these, I believe, as you want. Let's see what it says here. You can swap these rolls around to different attributes. If there is no roll over 16, then you can put one and set it to 16. So let's roll for our first one, and I will decide where it goes. So I drop the lowest roll, which will be one. It looks like I have 11, 15, which is not too bad. I'll put 15 for strength because I'm definitely going for the warrior. So 15 will be a plus one, which is decent. Next. All right. Oh, I forgot the last, the other die. Okay, so looks like this will be a low one. So we have eight, 10. Take away the one. So 10 will give us no modifier. For no, for a fighter, I believe, Charisma or Wisdom or either, mm, let's do Charisma. We'll do zero for now. Okay, next we'll do a third one. Looks like another low roll. So five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another tenner, so we'll carry that to, to Wisdom. This keeps up. We might have to do that 16. Yep, another roll, low roll. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten again. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm going to put this into intelligence. All right, so inadvertently getting ten three times in a row. Trying to give these a little more roll. Okay, so it looks like a three here. Another ten? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You gotta be kidding me. All right, so I'm gonna put this for dexterity. I swear I'm rolling these at the best of my ability. Can all right, there we go. Something more other than ten. So ten, twelve. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put the sixteen here for Constitution, and that does assist with your HP. So that's our Ability scores, sorry, attributes. And next page says to choose a race. I will be a human. Okay, human fighter named Oscar. Let's see, choose a class. There's four classes. The basic four classes. I will be a fighter. What I'll do is do, I will make a little room here, human fighter. There we go. Oscar will have the class abilities. So for fighters, this is eight. Modify the total by your constitution attributes modifier. If you have 13 ability score, you add one to the total. So we have Constitution of plus two. So with eight, that's going to be 10 HP. So I'll put HP over here. 10.10. .10. That's usually how I like to do that. Uh, attack bonus. AB. Plus one, except for magic users. So attack bonus will be plus one. Your fray die. Fray die is the unique thing about this game. It's like a little extra kick damage roll you do for enemies, I believe, that are equal or less than your level HP. We'll look, we'll look into that. I don't recall exactly, but it says here, you characters, a hero, and petty fools, petty foes, who should petty, petty fools, petty foo, uh, foes should be wary of getting too close. When fighting inferior enemies, you can roll a prey to kill or injure them around you basically the playing the game section has details on that so it's like a extra attack when there's a weaker enemy near near you okay fighter details are right here we can wear any armor bear shields wield any weapon gain combat skill hardiness more quicker than other character classes fighters gain plus one bonus to their attack 
bonus every time they advance a level. So attack bonus, one plus per uh, level. The freight has a D8. So 1D8 is our freight eye. And everything looks like is set. So now we move on, if we have to, to choose traits. So with this, there are three in front of this page that we can choose from, I believe. We choose their traits. I don't recall if it's a point system, but based on a video I watched, a gentleman rolled three of these, not the, sorry, not the equipment, uh, these traits right here on, the, on this table. So we will do that based on what I, what I saw. Do a background, an innate quality in the relationship. So we'll do this right here. We'll do background. We'll put a little line here. Separate the ability score, the attributes from the character backstory. BG. So we'll roll a D100, which I have right here, my Oracle dice. Our background, 34. A fallen noble. Interesting. Okay. So, fallen noble. I like that. All right. And then our innate qualities let's see what is what little perk or what little cork do we have 37 uh 37 huh iron determination determination okay i'll take that that's not exactly a setback I guess innate's not really a setback either. Let now we'll roll for relationship. 84, so relationship. Whoops, cannot spell today. I don't want to use this sheet and erase it. I think I'd rather just use my little booklet here. I was just thinking about that. Like, hey, there's this character sheet right in front of me, but at the same time, I don't want to ruin the book. 84. Uh, saved a learned sage. Okay, I will take that. Saved a learned sage. All right, so that's our uh, traits. And we'll go back. And I think we need some other details before we start buying equipment. You basically can put, give yourself some currency to buy equipment. So that's right, divide three points up among backgrounds or special traits to your character, such as veterans, mercenaries. So that, I, I think I recall that correctly from the video I watched. So now, final touches. Uh, buy your equipment, which we can do now. There's, we still have to do AC once we buy equipment. So I will follow this order. We did all this. Choose traits, apply bonus traits. Thieves get three points in their chosen archetype humans get two bonus points to spend as they wish uh okay so i get two more all right let's do that i'll go back to the other page here and let's say i will do another background 43 so this will be bg2 uh let's see this 42 Three, actually, 43. Guardsman, that, that works for me. Guardsman. And then we'll do another innate quality. So an IQ 2. All right. Let's do uh, 91. Tireless Endurance. That is definitely a interesting advantage to have in battle. Endurance. Okay, so these will be for future traits. I think if you, I don't know if you actually get more as you advance, but I'll keep the I'll keep this page open. 
Now uh, we're going to do inventory. So basically the back page will be my inventory tracker. So usually I'll just put INV, dot, dot, colon, um, currency, which we have to roll 3D6 times 10, I think. Yep, 3D6 times 10 gold pieces. So five, uh, wow, that's not a lot at all. Five, six, 60. So we have 60 gold pieces right here for gold coins, gold pieces. Not really worried about encumbrance right now. Okay, so you guys can't really see everything, but I will explain what I'm looking at here. Uh, we only have 60, which is nothing. Uh, light weapon will have to be our first choice. because Well, no, one-handed weapon. A 1d8 of damage. Okay, so I'll do a one-handed weapon, which will be a sword. We'll just do a sword. A sword's a 1d8 damage. And I know about the damage method. The, there's a different method of, of calculating damage in this game based on hit points. So that's 10. So I'll cross off this. That's 15, sorry. So 45. Next is we need some armor. Armor types. I will do leather. Yeah, leather armor. So leather. Leather armor. This is an A7 AC. That puts us down another 10, so now we're down to 35. Then let's see if we need any type of piece of a gear or equipment. Let's see, I'm going down this list that you guys should be able to see right now. Common clothing, we'll do that. So we're not stark naked. Uh, let's see, common clothing was going to be one, one gold piece. Let me close. That's 34. And then compass might come in handy. Crowbar. I'm we'll definitely do a crowbar. All right, that's going to be put us down five to 29. Uh, flask of oil, horse, iron. I need a torch. Torch is 10. Definitely buying torches. That's 10 torches, so times 10. Looking at five silver pieces. Oh, that's the part that gets me. So silver pieces, 10. So one gold piece equals 10 silver pieces. So that's point two point five, I think. One, I'm just going to say 28. <laughs> okay, whatever. One gold piece, I'll just modify it. Okay, that's probably good for now. Okay, we're done with buying equipment. Choose a spell. Oh, that we're not, we're not a cleric or a magic user. Record final touches. Note down your armor's hero's armor class. Unarmed heroes of base AC of nine. While armored ones, use the AC granted by their armor and shield. AC is improved by your hero's dexterity, but cannot be worse than AC nine. Okay, so armor seven plus dexterity zero. We're down. Cannot be worse than nine. Okay, so we are stuck at nine, I guess. Leather armor is seven. Write down your chosen weapons die damage, range, total attack, advanced management, modify, by irrelevant. Okay, so that's really interesting. Armor. Oh, it, it, I believe, adds on to it. So. Do I add seven on to the existing armor? Interesting, interesting. So if I'm reading this, I will pause the video. I don't want to, I don't want to waste your guys' time researching this. See, I, I think I was reading this backwards like D&D. The lower, the better. So our AC is actually going to be seven. Modified dexterity, we have nothing, so that's still seven. Okay, I believe I'm reading that right. Because I have that leather armor equipped at 7. There's a section right here. I kind of looked over it by mistake. Your armor class is the measure of how hard it is to hit your hero. But the lower the score, the better. An ordinary armed person is AC9. While the same man clad in plate armor and carrying shield at AC2. Your armor's class is based on the armor you're wearing. Plus modified by your dexterity. If your hero is carrying shield, subtract 1 point from their AC. A hero's AC is never worse than 9. That's what was confusing. The never worse than 9 is higher. Not lower higher so this is a descending ac game event 
uh, based on what I'm looking at so far. So we got that um, cleared up. AC7 is a okay start, I guess. Now, uh, it looks like that's really it. Write down your damage modifier bonus. It says here to uh, your weapon's damage die. My weapon damage die is a 1d8. So that, that'll be my hit. Uh, we'll just do damage die. Damage 1d8. Similar to the uh, tray die I have. But at least it's consistent. 1d8, yep. And then ranges, total attack and defense bonus, def uh, damage bonus modified or relevant. So I'm not thinking of doing damage. You consider your modifier from strength if it's melee plus damage and then attack bonus. So blah, blah, blah. So basically, strength. Without reading, if I recall correctly, to attack with your attack bonus, I have to, let's say the enemy's AC is 10. I roll a d20. Okay, I add my strength of plus one, that's 17. Attack bonus of plus one, that's 18. And then their AC of 10, so that'll be 28, that's a hit. So you add their AC because of the descending concept. So it takes OSR and modernizes it from at least what I'm looking at here. You have to basically land a 20 or higher is always a hit no matter what. When one is always a miss. So if I rolled a five and their AC was 10, my modifier a melee for strength is six, seven for attack bonus, 10 with their AC 17, that's a miss. So I have to roll higher than essentially you know, nine or eight. All right. Uh, then it says, make sure you have a goal in mind. Okay, well, I've been thinking about that goal concept. Let's see if the this page right here has any goals. I don't think it does. It just has backgrounds and inequalities and the relationships that we've had here. So let's see. That's playing the game. We'll get to that in a second. If I do, I think this video is mostly about character generation, making the character, but I might, uh, we might uh, step into that in a minute. But basically, write your own character goal. I think my goal for this character, I'll put it down here. So it, again, I don't know if you're supposed to add more of these details below, but we'll put goal down here. My goal is to get, let's see, maybe fame, fortune, the cliche usually, or uh, find the killer of my parents, or maybe that. Or is it save the, a learned sage? Maybe the sage I saved was kidnapped by a evil overlord. Or perhaps I like the fame and fortune. That I think I'm doing like doing good for fame and fortune for as as a selfish act. So fame and fortune, just keeping it really simple and cliche. Fame and fortune. All right, there we go. That's our character. And his name is Oscar. Okay, so just a little recap. Oscar has a strength of 15, dex uh, intelligence of 10, dexterity of 10, wisdom of 10, constitution of 16, charisma 10. So that's, that's a plus one, zero, 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 plus two, zero. Human fighter, HP currently at 10 out of 10. Attack bonus plus one, prey 1d8, AC7, damage 1d8 based on the weapon of a sword. Background fallen noble, innate iron determination relationship saved a learned sage background two guardsman iq2 tireless endurance goal is to become famous and have wealths of gold so like i said play the game there are four mechanics i will move over my dice tray here and keep the character sheet just in view in case we need it so this is the, the playing the game section, which essentially fits into these pages here. So there's about six, seven, eight, nine. There's definitely a good amount of rules to read. And there's an example. Okay, so handful of pages, not too bad at all for a, a pretty, pretty sizable book. Okay, so if you were just watching this video to see me create the character for an upcoming campaign, you can stop now. If you want to see me juggle my way through these rules here, trying to learn them on the fly, or, you know, again, I, re I read through this before, but trying to actually solidify my knowledge of this, then feel free to keep watching. Anyways, 
Uh, the four main mechanics of this game, basically, you have checks, saving throws, attack rolls, and damage rolls. For checks, it is a 2d8 method, so it's not going to be a d20. That's what has re really got me curious about this game. And I've talked about, I'm pretty sure I've talked about Scarlet Heroes before. I was double checking my video library. I thought I talked about Scarlet Heroes before. I, I don't recall if that video failed to get uploaded or ever, ever finished it. But anyways, checks basically, like I said, 2d8. Checks are not rolled for ordinary actions or deeds within the scope of the hero's traits. So it's not something I'm going to have to do with like every single step the player takes. But essentially, um, to roll a check, the hero's rolls a 2d8. And adds their highest relevant trait and adds their relevant attribute modifier. So, if the total is equal or higher than the check's difficulty, it's success. Natural two is a failure. Sixteen is always success. So basically, there are these little check differences. So you do add quite a bit. You add, let's see, if I was trying to push a boulder, and I have strength of fifteen plus one. So we roll, and I rolled a. A pretty good roll, actually. That's 11. So 11 adds a relevant trait, which is 15. So that's going to be a 26. We determine the difficulty of it would be average, 11. So we've already matched it. You add a relevant attribute modifier. But it doesn't say value. I don't think you actually add your, your core value. That wouldn't make sense. That will give you a huge ed edge over everything. Yeah, I don't think, I'm sorry. I don't think you actually add the value. You add their, your highest relevant trait and adds their relevant modifier. Okay, so I'm, I'm mistaken. You don't add the actual, this is just a common roll. So I rolled, trying to move that boulder, that's 11. That's a seven plus plus one, eight, so that's a fail. I think that's how you do it. If it's higher or equal than the checks of difficulty, let's say we roll this again. That's a twelve plus one, that's fifteen, then we are successful. Okay. So I hope I'm doing that right. Next is saving throws. I will circle back and check that online. I, I, I don't know why I'm still hesitant. Saving throws, resist foul of sorcery, evade random misfortune, withstand other hazards. Saving throws are rolled exactly the same way checks are, except the hero also adds their character level to the roll. Interesting. The difficulty to beat is always nine plus the hit die or a level of the creature forcing the saving throw level of actual hazards okay so if we're, if we're avoiding getting poisoned that's 10 and it says it's always going to be whoops that's 10 the difficulty beats always nine plus the hit die or level of the creature forcing and the saving throw let's say it's 10 but the hit die is a two so it'll be 12 so the same way as hazard i guess that would be Constitution plus two, so we will beat it. We will match it. Like I said, this was a learning experience. I paused the video, read into it. I was completely mistaken. Checks, you consider your trait and the equivalent ability modifier. So, the highest relevant trait, which will be if we're moving a stone, maybe tireless endurance. So, I divide the points up. I have the, let's see. Five points total because humans get an extra two based on the three you start with. So that is, I think, the number you use, one. So we roll, let's say the difficulty of moving that, that boulder is 11. And we rolled an eight. Okay, so eight to start. Then the highest relevant trait, which would be, I think, endurance. So that's my nine. And the ability modifier of our strength is 10. So that's a fail. But that's basically what you're supposed to do. If I'm not mistaken, I think that makes sense because these are the traits right here. So I, I put traits, uh, trait points, and they're they're spread across the five I chosen. So that does make a little more sense now. I think I see how it works. They're like skills essentially. Okay, moving on. 
Uh, saving throws, like I said, we roll the uh, the same as the checks, but you have to beat a nine plus the hit die of the other character or level. So we'll have to get to that when we actually play the game. Attack rolls. Determining the attack rolls. This is a d20, so I remember that. Determine whether or not a hero hits a target in combat. To make an attack roll, the character, the hero rolls a 1d20, adds their attack bonus, relevant attribute modifier, and the target's armor at class. We've already talked about this, so I got that. I think I got this down. So basically, that plus my uh, strength of plus 1, that's 12, plus attack bonus of 13, enemy AC of whatever, 10, it's over 20, I get the hit. So, damage rolls. Uh... Damage is a little differently. It says it works differently than most old school RPG, uh, old school games. When you roll damage from your weapon die, you count each die separately. Each die that comes with one it does no damage. Two to five is one point. Six to nine is two points. Ten plus for four points. I have the damage die of the D one D eight. So the D eight will be my whoops. That's a D ten. The D eight will be my best friend for this character. So. Basically, if I, in the future I get something that's 2d8, which I think there are weapons that have multiple die associated with it. Let's see. I don't see anything on multiple dice. Two handed weapons. Now, does the class change that? Let's go back to the class. So, fighter. Let's see. Fighters gain a combat skill and hardiness more quickly than other characters. Okay. So, if we have... I'm going to roll for, for the damage. That's going to be... So, that's not the total value of the two. I don't have 2D, 2d8, but I'm just giving this an example. Basically, it's going to be two points for this one and then two for that one. That's how you do damage. That's four points total. You count each die separately. So if it was just my my usual D8, this would be two points of damage. That makes sense. All right, so it's subtracted by, and if it's done to the to our character, it's subtracted from our hit points. And damage done to anyone else is, is their hit dice. So each die comes up to one and does no damage. Two to five does one point. Six to nine is two points. Ten... Does four points. We will never do, do ten or more, or four points, essentially, once we get a better weapon or level up. So, uh, everything else, that those are the four core mechanics of the game. Everything else is further explanation and divided up. The Freight Eye. Here's the Freight Eye. I was curious about this. So, here is the little go-to. I'll have to memorize that. So two through five is one, six through nine is three. It's two, sorry. And then it jumps right straight to four at 10. There is, there is no three. The Freight Eye. So every hero has a Freight Eye. Only heroes have them. A Freight Eye represents their lesser blows, passing strokes, incidental sorceries. Every round they are engaged with an enemy equal or fewer hit dice than their character than they have character levels. So one hit die or less. They can roll the freight eye to do damage at any time during their action. No modifiers apply to freight eye, just the lone die roll. So basically, the D8, this would be a two damage to any nearby helpless weaker villain. No modifiers apply. Thus, if a first level fighter has cornered in an alleyway by three 1D thugs and their 2D gang boss, he could roll his 1D freight eye in addition to his normal attack. He would ready dam read damage from the dice as normal and could apply it to any of the 1D thugs, perhaps killing two if he rolls well. The, D uh, the 2D H leader is too strong in the effect. Okay, so this these two points I rolled here only applies to one of the lower lower class uh, enemies. Okay, that does make sense. I'm sure I'll forget that at times. But this is basically it for the video. That's all I really wanted to do. Create the character, go through the character creation process, Correct myself many times, and I'm still enjoying the book. It's 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 really a really interesting system, and I really have to play it, play test it to 
uh, get used to it. Because again, I think this will be a, a slight learning curve for me as it's been evident even during the character creation process. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.